Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes. In today's video, we're taking a tour of another beautiful tiny house, but this one is owned by a young couple who decided to downsize for the affordability factor. Finding financial freedom through living tiny has allowed them to pay off their student loans faster than they ever imagined. But before we take a tour, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. Hey, I'm Jack. And I'm John. And welcome to the Wee Hive. We chose a gooseneck trailer. Our builder, Robin, helped us step by step. The total cost of the build, start to finish, inclusive of everything interior, appliances, and furniture, was around $85,000. Comparatively to the starting mortgage now of $400,000, $450,000. I think we came on <laughs> ahead, so I think we're okay. <laughs> we pay $500 a month for our monthly rent lease fee, which includes our water, sewage, trash, and landscaping. And then we pay an additional $350 a month as our mortgage. When I graduated college, I had over $150,000 in student loan debt. Since the decision of going tiny, I have been able to cut down on what was a 25, 30 year payoff down to two to three years. I cannot think of a better mechanism for giving yourself a dwelling mm -hmm. that is yours, that you can own, while also giving you the opportunity to aggressively pay off your loans. Every single bill under $1,000 for the entire month for the two of us is huge. We can choose to spend our time, our energy, and our money outside of our house. We are not wanting for anything, and we don't need anything more than what tiny house living provides. Come on in. We named our house the Weehive partly because my fiance's last name is Weehausen, but also because when we were thinking of names, there was this street poet on the side of the road that you paid 20 bucks to, and he talked to you for 10 minutes, and he wrote a poem about your life. And so the poem is actually hanging in our house right by our door, and he called the tiny house a tiny hive. They together find a tiny hive to live life with instead joy, respect, and closeness of home. And I was like, that's it, the we hive. So I actually commissioned an artist to create this graphic. It was supposed to be an outdoor sign, but someone loved it so much that we kept it inside. <laughs> So we're actually in the north part of the tiny house where I actually work from home. This is my desk space. As you can see, I really like plants. That's one of the things that was really important to me on how we can fit that into our home. I have my double monitors here and a really nice office chair. I work here nine to five, Monday through Friday, and it's the best commute I've ever had. I would highly recommend it. <laughs> A misconception of tiny living and people that live tiny is that we're super organized and we're like the Marie Kondos of the world and that's not the case. Um, I'm just really good at hiding my disorganization. So here are two shelving units from Walmart that I labeled as office, miscellaneous, whatever, and we just throw things in there. Shows that we're organized, but kind of not. We're not the best at it. <laughs> Moving from the office into the living room is our love seat and our fireplace. And this is actually a smart TV. So during the day it has art and then we can watch TV at night. One of the things that we really focused on is finding new storage solutions. You really have to think outside of the box. 
We bought this electric fireplace that was super cheap. And instead of having a unit just on the wall, our builder made us this. We have all of our TV cords and we'll have like our game systems if they're not up in the bedroom here. This is our third couch of the tiny home living experience. And something that I would recommend if you are thinking of going tiny is living in your space and experiencing your space before you buy furniture. We bought two couches before this that in theory fit and they did, but it didn't fit the space and it was hard to walk around. So we finally, after months, settled on a swivel love chair. It only fits one and a half people, but that's okay with us. We'll sit, one will sit here, one will sit over there. This is what works for this space. Welcome to the kitchen. The priorities for us for the kitchen were that it felt like a great room and that we could entertain on a large island and cabinet space. We wanted this big countertop. We wanted a place to sit to eat. So this is actually where we sit to eat for our meals. We knew that we would use the quartz countertops for other things just besides meals. We've had game nights here, we put our crafts here, we'll do whatever we need to here because this is our main space. We wanted to make sure that we had something durable, so that was very important. Because we only needed so little of the quartz countertop, we went to a scrapyard and were able to get it very inexpensive for this area and for this little part right here. Getting things for a cheaper price because you don't need as much is a huge benefit of living tiny. The pieces that we built around were this large farmhouse sink. I can actually get my hands dirty. So I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of space for dishes, for cleaning off money shoes, whatever it is. And we actually have a dishwasher as well, which is absolutely key in a tiny house, <laughs> or just in general. <laughs> we also have a smaller stove slash oven. It's not a standard size, but it's absolutely perfect. It's a four burner. Throughout the house, we have very interesting and unique storage solutions. So the refrigerator is an apartment sized refrigerator, but underneath the refrigerator is a drawer that we keep like our sheet pans and muffin pans and stuff in, and then we close it off. And this allowed the refrigerator to be an extra four, five, six inches off the floor. If I was to do it over again, I would highly recommend putting in more kitchen storage than you even think. We only have one cabinet for our pantry and it's not organized whatsoever, but if I was to do it ever again, I definitely would add more food storage. On the top of our kitchen cabinets, we have more plants. These actually came with me from living in a 1200 square foot apartment where I had 45 plants, which is kind of crazy. So I had to pare down plants and I gave them away and I sold them and a lot of love came from those plants but I chose my favorites and a bunch of them live there because I wanted earthy. I didn't want cold and I think that with black and white decor it could go cold and I didn't want that. So I brought in a bunch of outdoors nature into our house. One of my favorite pieces of the house is actually this tiny little beehive. Of course, we are the Weehive, and our neighbor, M, who was actually featured on this channel, created this in her pottery studio that's connected to her tiny house. So it was our housewarming, thanks for being our friend, and it's really special to us because it was made with so much love. We have art up here and here because again, I didn't want it to be stark. And this hallway was stark. It was very white, it was very hospital, and I definitely didn't want that. I and John are very colorful people, so we wanted to make sure that we brought that in our art. Welcome to the bathroom. On this side of our bathroom, we have our vanity sink and our mirror, and this actually lights up and is a medicine cabinet, so it keeps all of our stuff. 
And we have our toilet here. It's actually an RV toilet. We have storage here and shelving here with all of our medicine hidden by baskets. And then we have a shelf underneath the vanity for extra towels, makeup. One of John's main things was having a full bath. It was very important to him. So that cut a lot of space in the bathroom. We decided to actually eliminate the washer dryer. What we do is we actually employ a service that will pick up, wash, dry, fold, and deliver our laundry, which was a clutch move for me. I hate that chore. <laughs> That's my least favorite chore. So being able to outsource that chore was just a dream. To save space while you're doing your everyday business, we actually put our laundry hamper in the shower and it works out really well. We just take it out and put it back in. Okay, now we're gonna let my fiance, John, show us the bedroom. So moving up to the bedroom, you'll notice that we have four stairs here that also all include their own storage. Each of them slide out as their own individual drawers. And it's fantastic to be able to, again, hide away uh, some of our things that we don't use as often within our stairs that we need going up to our bedroom. You'll notice the size of these stairs is a little uh, out of the ordinary. They had to be configured in such a way for us to maximize our drawer space that would be incorporated into the stairs, but also give us a safe way to get up and down from the bedroom. Although we are in the loft unconventional to many tiny houses, we can actually fully stand. This is a eight foot ceiling. This was a premier priority for us to be able to comfortably get up out of bed, stand up out of bed, put on our clothes, get dressed, all without having to feel crunched over and crowded. This is a closet that our builder incorporated. We just have all of our hanging clothes here, clothes that we wear fairly often. One of our favorite things about this space is our projector. You'll notice we have a projector hanging from the ceiling and it has a automatic remote button feature that pulls down, allows us to enjoy movies in the evening. We oftentimes will enjoy movies up here as well as an occasional game of Nintendo Switch. Jackie often likes to kick my ass in Mario Party sitting up here enjoying Nintendo Switch. You'll notice that as part of our HVAC system, it is also unconventional to many tiny houses where you'll oftentimes find mini split systems. Those systems are fantastic in their own right, though this system does have some of its own unique advantages. One of the things being that everything is self-contained within this unit. And so for instances where the unit breaks, it gives us the easy capability to simply slide out and slide in a new unit. It serves as heat pump as well as for cooling. We have one here as well as in the front of the house. Come with me and I'll show you our attic space. So similar to regular size homes, we have our own attic space. This was a idea that our builder incorporated. It is directly on top of our bathroom. This is an eight by six space that allows us to store some of our luggage, some of our seasonal bins with some Christmas decorations, holiday decorations. We also have some of our additional shoes up here in these little bins that can quickly slide out with still the ability to quickly and easily go up there if we need to. Our tiny house is 30 by 8 by 14, 240 square feet. The 14 foot ceilings was just an added benefit of making our house feel roomier and more spacious. 14 foot high is the maximum that you can have to legally tow your tiny house on the road without having to get any additional permit or wide load signage. The French doors were a key piece for us too as a way to allow us to easily move furniture in and out. We decided to go with a rubber roof solution. The reason that we have a slightly sloped roof, as you'll notice, and so it allowed for easy install as well as a cost-effective solution over going with something like metal 
You'll notice as part of our siding, we have predominantly white vinyl vertical siding. That was something that we chose for aesthetic purposes with the accent striped matte black metal. For our skirting, we have the requirement to skirt our house as part of the tiny house community that we live in. And we decided to go with essentially a foam insulation board. This is foam board that you can just get in any Lowe's or Home Depot and was a very cost effective way for us to provide the level of insulation that we knew we were going to need during the winter months, but also give us a way to quickly and easily install it and uninstall it for when we choose to move the house. Having this foam skirting gives us the peace of mind that on cold mornings such as this, we will have the insulation that we need to keep our pipes warm such that they won't freeze. One of our biggest aspirations for Going Tiny was the incentive to utilize more of our outdoor space as opposed to our indoor space. And we knew that the deck would be a key component of that. Additionally, we were able to make very environmentally conscious decisions by utilizing refurbished pallets. If we were to lift up one of these boards, you would find that there's refurbished pallets underneath and we've reinforced the decking with brand new wood. We were able to get the aesthetic look that we need for doing it in a very cost effective way. During the summer months, we love to come out here and enjoy barbecues. We have many of our neighbors over and enjoy lunch, dinners out here, as well as just sitting out here, reading and enjoying a nice drink or two. Now let's go check out our outdoor storage space. This is the entryway to our outdoor storage space. This is underneath our gooseneck trailer. And essentially we have a shed door here, just two quick locks that slides out. So with this space underneath our gooseneck trailer, we have many weatherproof bins that allow us to stow away things that we don't often use on an everyday basis and keep out of the elements. This storage space is something that we did ourselves. We did this obviously post build and we wanted to make a slightly more decorative decision here that you'll notice on the outside than what we did for the rest of the skirting that is just primary foam board. Truly and deeply, like I can't say it enough that I am extremely happy. This is not just a home, it's a lifestyle that allows you to pursue your passions, to put your finances and your energy into something else. There are people that choose to live tiny that make a lot of money and they want a simpler life. But there are also people that choose to live tiny that don't make a lot of money and just need to live this way. And there are no other neighborhoods or dwellings that allow that type of melting pot to be together. We feel extremely grateful for the diversity that directly surrounds us. It gives us visibility to folks that are putting themselves first and doing what makes them happy. Thanks for watching this week's video. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you very soon with another tiny or unique home tour.